was out walking the streets of Laredo. As I walked out in Laredo one day, I spied a young couple wrapped up in white linen, wrapped up in white linen, as cold as a flame. Good evening, Thomas. Good evening, Fred. I see. Nothing unusual today. I'm ready to be relieved. The word is charity. Charity. Very well. As I boldly step by, come sit down beside me and hear my sad story. Good evening, Duke. Good evening, Batman. Everything all right? And I know I must die. This establishment cannot be robbed. It has never been robbed and never will be robbed. Everything else all right? It's fine, sir. Very well. Cherokee is the word tonight. Take me to the green valley. Evening, boys. Everything all right? Fine, sir. Well, the word tonight is Cherokee. Continue with your duties. crazy enough to try anything wild. A hold up, you mean? Well, honey and flies, money and outlaws. This establishment cannot be robbed. It has never been robbed. It never will be robbed. <laughs> territory, land of new settlers, land of outlaws. Frank Kane had been appointed Chief United States Marshal by President Grover Cleveland. We were his deputies. This is our story. This is the way it happened. Any trouble, you boys know where to find me. Oh, we'll take care of things here, Marshal. You have yourself a good trip, Mr. Kane. Right, Heck. Well, see you Tuesday. Mr. Bigelow. Sit still. Well, what can we do for you today? Your casual patrol of the casino is not enough. I'm considering installing a private alarm system directly to your office. Oh, don't rightly see how we can do more than we're doing right now, Mr. Bigelow. Why not? Well, Marshal Kane feels pretty strong about it. Uh, he says the government doesn't pay its marshals to guard local gambling houses. Not that we wouldn't take action if the law were broken. That may be Kane's understanding of duty, but it's not mine. Where is Kane? Just left to see the territorial governor. Won't be back till Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday. He's just doing his job. Well, don't give him no right just to, just to run a man down. Cool down, Gramps. We're halfway home. Well, I didn't drive them four catted steers all the way from Lucas Town to Ellsworth just to be rammed down by a Tim Badge deputy. I'm so dirty, I feel like I've been buried and stomped on. Bath and a shave, one dollar. You know, I remember the time when a dollar 
A dollar would buy five acres of grass. And them steers brought $3,500. Well, that's old Sam Packer's money. It ain't ours. Yeah, we got Rover's wages coming. Sure, and we got the partnership in the ranch, and we get his money back to him. So don't you be getting so fancy rich on promised money. Sorry my partner spooked your horses, boys. He's half Indian sometimes. I'm Will Foreman, Deputy Marshal. Danny Cannon. This is my brother, Joe. Joe. Right. And uh, don't mind him, none. He's been straddling the center fire saddle so long his brains is buck loose. Yeah, I know how it is. Well, as soon as you get scoured and scraped and fit around some apple pie, you will feel human again. Let's try it. All right, my bandana's dirty in my face. Care for chocolate? No, no, I think I see something I like a little better. You know, I think my old lucky eagle would get in a rattle. You know, I can't understand how a man who stays as close to a quarter as you do can plug down $10 on a Pharaoh layout. Well, this ain't no ordinary $10. This here is my lucky eagle. Good evening, gents. Check your guns. You mean everybody? Where is it? Not even the hired helper will have to care of. What's that under your shirt? Well, this here's my money belt. Oh, let's see it. Sure. Scare you fellas? I beg your pardon, sir. It's just part of the job. Feed the dog, sir. You've got a hair trick or stones, I suppose. Hello, Mr. Black. Place your bets, please. Oh, I bet uh, 15. Rien ne va plus. Thirteen, odd. Boy, you see how easy this is? Come easy, go easy. Make your bet. Oh, uh, um, uh, uh, 27. Rien ne va plus. 27 odd reds. Alouette, jump the alouette. Look you over there. Well, never you mind. You just look here. Every time this here wheel stops, we're pulling in another 50 acres. Oh! Well, well, you go ahead and break the bank. I'm going to move where there's something live. Place your bets, please. from Noosa's town to Ellsworth. And I ain't never seen a filly like that in Oakland. A lovely young lady. Oh, come on, ma'am. Could I buy you something to drink? Give you the moon? Give you Texas? <laughs> Thank you. I want nothing at all. Well, ma'am, I'd be mighty proud to have you sit with us. Blanche, why don't you join us? The boy means well, I'm sure. Oh, very well. I promise I will be right back. I'll be right back, too, OK? Place your bed, please. Well, how you doing, brother? Just never you mind. Number 13, Red. What's biting you? You winning, ain't you? Yeah, I was, but I... I gotta double it up to get it back again. Well, ride it on out, cowboy. Yeah. Rien ne va plus. 
seven rent. I think I just, uh, better spread my luck a little bit. Don't feel so bad, brother. As long as we don't get into Sam Packer's beef money. Yeah, you can, uh, uh, 13, 14, 16, and 17. Rien ne va plus. 23, Red. Well, Danny, I think, uh, we'd better go now. Look, uh, Joe, uh, I want you to come over and have a drink because I want to show you a lady that's a velvet glory. Danny, you don't understand. I lost it. I lost it. I lost the whole shooting match. I don't know how it happened. I was, I was winning here and then I just, I just lost it. You mean, you mean you lost all of Sam's money? Had nothing left? I got an eagle. Well, now you buck it on out, Joe, because you can't quit now. What's the use, Danny? I lost 3,500. A partnership in the ranch, Sam's winner feed, our good name, I just lost it. Rien ne va plus. Black. Nice. I see, Joe. All you gotta do is have a little faith. I had faith to desperation, Danny. I'm scared. Good for you, boys. I'm quitting while I'm ahead. Place your bet. All right, you let her ride. Rien ne va plus. Six red, We'll get out of here. No, 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 no. I cannot pay a bet like this. He won. I saw him win. What's the trouble, Maurice? Well, these gentlemen claim we owe their money. The table was over and I was knocked down. That's all I know about it. We won twice. No, no. Look, I bet $10. And I won. And that came to $170 plus my lucky eagle. And I let it ride. And like the sun comes up from the east, I won again. Now, mister, that came to better than... That came to better than $3,000. Now, I already lost $3,500 to you. So you see, you're still ahead of me. That's a lot of money. Do you remember it? Well, I just remember they were playing, that's all. Mr. Marshall, I gotta have that money now. You can see that I get it. Any witnesses? Witnesses don't count. Nobody's ever for the house. Oh, I just remember they had $10 because uh, they made such a point of it. Well, that's as far as we can go. Payne. Mr. Marshall, I won that money. I really did. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. You can take it to court if you'd like, but without any witnesses. You look after things here. Hi, Judge. in there. Sorry, boys, about your losing. Cashed in just in time. Yeah, just old man's luck. Well, time to be rolling on home. Good night, boys. Good night, sir. We just got to get that money. We don't want to hurt nobody. Listen, brother, you do me a favor. <laughs> 
for you, hit me, and hit me as hard as you can. What's the matter with you, Jim? Just do it. Come on now. Hit me. Hit me. <laughs> All right, Dan Cannon, you just remember this. We've eaten some strange beef, and we've cut a few fences, and I don't mind burning somebody that's trying to burn me, but we ain't about to hit an old man over the head. have some more breakfast with me? It's hard for an old man to eat by himself. And after what you did for me last night, I feel I owe you a lot more than a breakfast. Well, what was that, Judge? I don't usually spend my time uh, flashing my bankroll and then walking through dark alleyways. You mean you knew that... Uh, Believe we were... me. I did it for your own good. I had to know. All right. We didn't bash your head in, but... What was it you had to know? You'd like your money back, wouldn't you? You mean you'd take it to court? No, no. As a retired judge, I'd have to advise you the debt is not collectible. But as a human being, I advise you that it is. Well, then let's just get one thing straight. My brother and me, we ain't gunfighters. We try to keep the law. Commendable. But, uh, think about it. Let me know tonight, if you like. Shall we say about seven? <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Well, boys, I knew you were quality. Sit down. Now, tell me. And while we're here, we'd like to know what you're planning and what we would get out of it. A fair question. Let me put it this way. I'll take what you boys don't want. Boys, I believe a man can do anything if he uses his head first, his strength second. Why does a man climb a mountain? He climbs it because it is there. I don't like a thieving gambler bragging about his impregnable Gibraltar. So, I just like to show him he's wrong. Well, if we go in on this, we don't want no killing, no hard stuff. We just want our $3,500, and that's all. Exactly. Now, here's the plan. These are the night guards inside the casino and theater. Here you are. The whole crew. Foyer checkers, floor walkers, mezzanine guards. It's complete. Take your time, study them. We have until Saturday. Is there anything else? Yes. Bigelow arrives promptly at 8 o'clock in the evening, and he stays until closing at 4 in the morning. He tours the floor every hour on the hour. He has lunch at 11.15. He collects money from the tables during that midnight inspection. That money is taken in a bag to the office and placed in a vault, which is beyond our efforts. What about peace officers? The U.S. Marshal's office has no routine inspection policy for local businesses. So far, so good. Look here. You sure don't shine your gear, do you? It takes patience, Joe, but it pays off. Now, on each of the larger gambling tables is an alarm switch. Check that the next time you go in. The alarm switch is connected to a bell. They ain't very trusting. Oh, the place is full of traps. Now, here is the bolt on the front door, connected to this lever. If Bigelow presses this lever, the front door is immediately bolted tight. You can't do anything in there without guns, and, and you just can't get guns in there. Can't is not in our lexicon. Of course, we need guns, but only as a threat. Then there's the dogs. Oh, yes. The dogs. There's a lever for their cage, too. Be tragic for us if they got loose. <laughs> things across the water in Paris. That's just on the billboard. 
was born in New Orleans of a noble Creole family. You ever consider ranch life? Johnny, I met a man once when I had a chance to study in New York. There's always a man to break a woman's heart someplace. I don't think I want to hear about it. Oh, you might as well listen. I married that man. He was young and romantic and French. And he talked. You don't talk. That's what I like about you. Oh, I wanted love and a family, and then I found out what a worthless, cruel sneak he really was. You sure of him now? No. He works here as Chief Coupier. Blanche, my dreams have been lying to me. Sit down, Danny. Your dreams may lie to you, but not me. Who's the husband? Our legal husband. Does he matter so much? You're all that matters, Blanche. Oh, you see why I work in this place? Buy enough money, he let me go. Well, I can let him go with a punch in the nose. That won't help at all. Well, good evening, children. Well, they say misery loves company. Yeah, are always so wise, yet. I can tell a southern lady by any number of little things. And I know Danny is honest as the day is long. He is nice, isn't he? Well, now everybody has me approved, I vote to change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I like you too, Josh. Next to Danny, you're the only man I know who is out for something. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Merci. Oh, Marie. You're drunk. Drunk or so, I'm your husband. Now, you will please shut up and get backstage. See here, my man. Oh, don't see here, my man, me. You will leave my wife alone. Come on to all of you. Oh, please excuse me. But Danny, uh, don't lose your head now. Well, what are you waiting for? Allez, 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 allez. Oh. The lady may be your wife, but she's not a dog to beat. This is family business. And you will please keep your nose out of it. You know, you're liable to suffer for billing and cooing with my wife. Mr. I respect your wife. Hey! He gives you any more trouble, you let me know. Easy, gents. I'm going. when you finish working. Well, he come at me with a bottle and I hit him, Marshal King. Glad Shantae's his wife. You a friend of hers? Now, you watch that. Calm down, youngster. This is no fancy show play. This is dirty back knife and murder. I never saw him after I left. That's all there is to it. We're asking everyone's help. You got anything more? No. All right, you can go. Just be careful. Now, I'll show you how to rob the unrobable come Saturday night. Well, there's only one thing that, that worries me, Judge, is them rafflemen up in the mezzanine. I mean, it just doesn't look like there's any way to beat them. And what kind of lamps are in the chandeliers? Well, they're kerosene lamps. If you monkey with them, you're going to start a fire. Exactly. But you can monkey with the kerosene. At 8 a.m., Pop Morton fills the lamps from a kerosene tank at the rear of the building. Now, suppose someone uh, mixes a can of lard into that kerosene. Old Pop will never know it. About midnight, those lamps will foul and their light dim. They'll be putting out a smoke that irritates the eyes. By midnight, those rifles won't see the main floor clearly. But they'll be getting the worst of it because down on the floor, it'll be almost normal. You really got it figured. It'll work. Uh, they uh, give you a hard time in the marshal's office? I told him if I was going to kill that Frenchman, I wouldn't use a knife. Yeah. A knife is more of a woman's weapon. Are you hinting that... I'm not hinting nothing. I'm just glad you're clear because tomorrow we move. 
tomorrow. What about the guns? That has been solved by admitting one other member to our group, who should be here soon. My plan is complete, and we are ready to split that casino wide open. Ah, come in, my dear. You will never regret your action. What are you doing, rehearsing? Look in the hat, my boy. They don't make coal oil no more the way they used to. The kids have been at it again. Water in it? No, it ain't water. Just extra slimy. You get fussier every time I talk to you. Yeah, well... Come in. Well, here's your candy, Judge. Now, you ain't gonna put those dogs out permanent. Certainly not. Now, you and Joe will make a plain trail south as if you were heading for the Chickasaw Nation. Blanche and I will start north for the river, but we'll turn east and follow the Cimarron to the ferry at Ross. You will make a loop around and we'll meet at the ferry crossing for the split. Fair enough? Fair enough, but you better carry some wire cutters. Lots of new fences up that way. Excellent idea. Any other suggestions? Well, it looks like sultry weather. We can't worry about the weather. Maybe a rainstorm out west. Let it wash out our trail. Now, tonight's the night. The oil is fixed. The lamps are low. It's Saturday. Let's run through it. Good evening, boys. Hi. Good evening, Marshal Foreman. Hope you don't have any Saturday night trouble. No, I get paid for handling trouble. Good evening, Danny. Judge. Joe. Hi, Judge. Care for some candy? No, oh, thank you, Judge. Well, thank you, Judge. My favorite kind, chocolate creams. Well, boys, it's going to be a lucky night. No point in my bringing a gun in here. Now you're getting the idea. <laughs> now. What you got in your pocket? Oh. Uh... Just, just my cigar case. Let's see it. Do you, uh, <laughs> care for a cigar? No, thanks. I chew. How about sharing a candy with me? I've got a sweet tooth, too. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll save you a piece next time. Well, have a good time tonight, boys. We'll try. Oh, Mr. You're standing on a 
our way here. Shut up, will you? This guy said you're in our way. What's the matter? You want to fight about it? Don't start nothing, Joe. Not now. See? I got it this time, mister. Me. This is fine. Don't see good enough to shoot, can't you? Well, the wits are all fouled up. You better report it. Uh, it's just like any other night. You must need specs. Listen, you better report it. Ah, uh, go talk to yourself. Anything. Don't say anything. Or I'll kill you dead. Mr. Bigelow, this boy is desperate. Your word tonight is Zuni. Don't use it. Pay attention. We're going to collect the money the way you always do it. One wrong move and you will die. Measure quickly your life against the money on the tables. You have the gun. One of the Texans. I'll give you $3,500. No strings attached. We're going to take it all. It's too late now to be honest, Mr. Bigelow. He's the boss. I'm the gun. Now, let's go get the money. got a chance. For once in your life, nothing is going to work for you. I wish they'd trim those lamps. The room's filled with smoke. Excuse me, Mr. Bigelow. What is it, Duck? There's something wrong. The dogs are dead. Dead? Sorry. Get back to your post. All right, Mr. Bigelow. Shall we go to your office? Where's the closet? An oversight. You can go now, Danny. I'll handle him. But, uh, I'll handle him. Oh, no, Judge. The dead don't remember. He deserved just what he got. You go on ahead and meet Joe and Ride. I'll be a minute after you. Joe, 
He killed that Mr. Bigelow. Foreman leaving early tonight, Blanche. Uh, I, I quit that cheap place. Without Maurice, I, I have no ties with it. I am going to New York. Well, you make up your mind awfully fast to move such a long ways. Hmm. C'est la vie. Hurt your hand, Judge? Yeah, I uh, cut it on a piece of glass. Well, you better get it tied up. Don't want to get locked to Good luck, Blanche. Of the ferry? The landing's five feet underwater. Well, at least we don't have to run. Our tracks are covered up for sure. Can't go back, can't cross over. Well, at least we're high and dry. Now, how do you want it? Gold or currency? Well, $3,500 in big bills. I want it to go in this here envelope. Now it's addressed and stamped. That's gonna go to old Sam Packer come hell or high water. Take this as a bonus. Judge, you murdered a man back there. The finishing touch to a perfectly executed plan. Bigelow was no friend of yours. He wasn't no killing enemy either. We're warned for murder, we're gonna be paid for it. You mean you want a larger cut? That's right. Even shares. You settled for 3,500. Blanche wants 5,000. That's our deal. But murder was not the deal. I'd just as soon you didn't criticize my work by second-guessing in hindsight. At the time, I felt it was necessary to silence Mr. Bigelow, and I silenced him. That was that. Now, here is your 5,000. Well, there isn't any hurry. You can't go anywhere till morning. We'll see it our way. That is the split. There's something sneaky about you, Judge. You didn't have to kill them dogs. We don't have to like each other. We're only temporary business associates, and I aim to show a profit. You got till morning. Oh, let's not quarrel. We've all done very well. I'd like to give each of you a thousand dollar bonus. You can travel clear to Australia on that. Not Australia. I am going to New York. Not much for city life. Well, I am not much for dugouts, rush arbor, or straw ticks either. I need you, Blanche. And you need me. Oh, Danny. You are a nice boy. You are a very nice boy. But I must sing. Blanche Chante, she will be queen of the New York stage. I, I know you, I know you're born to better things, Blanche. And, and you've had a lot of bad luck. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing prettier than Texas in the spring, with blue bonnets waving for a hundred miles. Well, Danny, I know what the prairie is. I was born plain Blanche Watson. I was raised in a dugout in Bullfoot Creek. You know where that is? No. No, I'm afraid I don't. Well, Bullfoot Creek is in the middle of nowhere. 
and he runs into the Salina River. You know where that is? No, I don't. The Salina River, it, it runs into the car, and the car runs into the Mississippi. And I ain't never seen New Orleans in my life. Oh, rivers. I want to go. Sit down, please. Now. Now I am Blanche Chante. Toast of New York. Queen of the New Orleans Mardi Gras. The greatest pearl in Paris. Right here. With this money. We're heading for Ross Ferry. Straight east. Think they'll still be there? They will. The rain might have washed out the tracks, but it's bound to wash out that ferry, too. Hit up. Light in the east. It won't be long now. All right, let's cut it up four ways. I'm sick of you hammerheads telling me my business. If it wasn't for me, you'd be out wrangling stolen horses at $20 a head. I've given you a bonus. I've kept my word. You murdered a man. Not just one. I removed two totally useless beings standing in the way. But do I get any thanks for it? You! You killed Maurice. Of course. You would have told him everything. You wouldn't wiggle without his say-so, because he took you out of that bullfoot dugout and taught you everything you know. New York. You couldn't compete with the trash in Guthrie. Olive. Nobody slaps me. Cowboys going on. 